<laughs> because most of us are afraid to be on mission with God. Yes, amen, ba? Amen. amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, what can you see here? And then here. This will be our scripture or the message, uh, the thrust of my message where we can be used by God. God says, I can use anyone of you. Amen? No. But God says, in this message, I'd like you to listen carefully. Dahil may exam tayo. Kaya na itong itatanong sa inyo. Or God would like to ask you. And I'd like to hear your answer. Okay ko tayo dyan? Okay ko tayo dyan? So walang matutulog ha? Okay lang hindi kayo tumayo. Ulang kayo. I'd like to listen carefully. I hope you let all you see the background of the story. This one and this one. This is Isaiah. And here in the story, as we read the account of Isaiah 6, before God would use us to be in partnership with His mission or join in His mission, God said, I'd like you to learn first humility. It may not be your weakness, that's why you're so proud, but it's not your weakness. And the next one is God wants us to learn obedience. So this two will talk about in relation to then God will say, okay, if you're willing and willing to be corrected or transformed or what words we want to use, then and continue to join me, enjoy the harvest and have fun with me. Okay? <clears throat> So it's taken from Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 4, today's English version. I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. <coughs> train, hindi yung MRT, yung, no, yung nasa ano na, yung sa wedding yung bride, kung may mahabang, that's what they call the train. Feel the temple. And then, above it, above that temple, there were zero kings, or angels, and they were in God's presence, because God was there. We are in God's presence. We've been singing. You love to be in God's presence? Yes. And we are, when you are in God's presence, what will happen? That, that's the picture of life, which is not so clear, but that's uh, where God is sitting on the throne. And there are the angels with six wings, and uh, it's described there. And then what did they do? And one cried unto another, so they just shout all this to each other. He said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the host of the door moved at the voice of Him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So you can see God's presence there. And what will happen to us if we look at ourselves before God? And Isaiah said, I don't know if you will say this before God's presence. Looking at God, so holy, glorious, and sanctified. And you look at yourself and you say, oh, there is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that passes my lips is simple. Amen? I mean, I agree? We had a professor who was a Pentecostal from FTC uh, then. And he pressed and pressed you to choose an artist, Daniel Romeo, because suddenly, professor, he didn't buy nothing. We had a new P1 room, and he was teaching and explaining, and he always said, Amen, because that's the way Pentecostals do and say, but after every, Amen? Nobody replies. Amen? Later on, he realized maybe I've got the wrong word. Do you agree? Agree. <laughs> How do you reply? Amen. Agree. And, Dito, Sabi Dito, 
that passes my lips, every word that comes out is sinful. Dahil, because I live among a people whose every word is sinful. The culture, the place where we live, how we were brought up, our surroundings, contributes to a lot of that. So we are sinful. And yet, with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. So if you can picture yourself, God sitting on His throne, the angels are shouting there, and you look at yourself, and what happens? Is that moving? Yeah. Then you look at God, and you look at yourself, and you have no other way but to confess. Then one of the creatures flew down to me, carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. That's a cousin of tanks. Tongs <laughs> Okay, that's the call. I like to see a picture of that so that you can, as I begin to read and explain, hopefully you can begin to you see yourself. Why did God use them as a picture? And then, with that, the angel, he touched my lips with a burning coal, and you said, well, what would you say? Your lips is touched by burning coal. He said, whoa, it's like ice cream. No, oh, it's, it's painful. It's uncomfortable. This has touched your lips, the angel said. Your guilt is gone and your sins are forgiven. Wow, that's what we should thank God for. And that's why we love to be in God's presence and sing to Him. Because when we confess our sins, He will cleanse us. Insight from the Bible expository uh, for the Old Testament. I just mentioned some of this. I just find this helpful. So, some of to say insight. He saw himself as Isaiah. We can say, me, you. Can you see yourself? The sight of the Holy God and the sound of the Holy Hymn of Worship brought great conviction to Isaiah's heart. When we are in God's presence, does it bring us conviction in ourselves that we can say, Oh, God is so holy, and I look at myself, Oh, Lord, I'm not worth it. God said, I can use you. I can use anyone. But you have to confess your sins. I have to cleanse you. <coughs> and so here, uh, and he confessed that he was a sinner. And clean lips are caused by an unclean heart. It's in Matthew 12. It's not those that comes in, but what comes out that defiles a man. The worst that comes out is coming from the heart. The heart has to be cleansed. But are we confessing, accepting we are a sinner? Or we are so proud, no, I'm so, I'm not sinning. I've kept that all my days, etc., etc. So humility is important before that. When you are in the work of God and things are going so well and blessed, <coughs> and there's a human tendency to be proud. God said no. So the moment we do that, he said, okay, I'll put you down. So let's be careful with that. And I say crowd out to be cleansed inwardly, and God met his need. And he will meet your need and my needs. That's where the symbolic, I hope you can see the meaning and the picture. It's there, but the source of the sin is in the heart. God will be cleaning us. So when God is using us and we're joining Him, we continue to sin, but God will continue to cleanse us of our sins. Unless we don't allow it. Because as we said before, God gives us the free will. Create in me a clean heart. Can we say that to God? Or, oh, not yet. Maybe, maybe this year, maybe next year. Do you know the song? Maybe never. <laughs> maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe never. Now, continuing with the exposit expository, in this scene had been on earth. Uh, the calls would have come from the brazen altar, which 
our sacrifice, our sacrificial blood had been shed, or perhaps from the center of the high priest on the day of atonement. Isaiah's cleansing came by blood and fire, and it was verified by the word of the Lord, Isaiah 6 7. And before we can minister to others now, take note of this why God wants us to come before Him and be cleansed. Before we can minister to others, we must permit God to minister to us. Before we pronounce woe and give judgment to others, look at ourselves. We must sincerely say, woe is me. I say as conviction led to confession, and confession led to cleansing. Like Isaiah, many of the great heroes of faith saw themselves as sinners and humbled themselves before God. Abraham is one of them, Jacob, Job, David, Paul, Peter, and you can put your name there or you won't, and you won't be cleansed. This one is one thing I'd like you to remember. Never underestimate what God can do with one willing worker. You look at yourselves, Lord, don't underestimate what God can do with one willing worker. You have to be willing. And there is an even greater need for harvest today, laborers from the harvest, or the gospel. Are you one of God's willing volunteers? How many would say, Lord, I want to volunteer? How many? No answer? God is asking, how many are willing to volunteer? He says, Lord, I know you can hear me. I'm going to raise my hands. Hey, hello, Lord. Pag ako kita ako, kasi hindi ko ginawa, Lord, I committed, I don't want to raise my hands. Well, God knows what's right for us. What did I write? It's read. Uh, this is from the Bible Expository Commentary. We hope so. See, where is the author? Uh, <clears throat> okay, cleansing, preparation before God would use us. So God would like to use us. So, how does this is the way we all should go and undergo? And I hope you can remember that. He will teach us to be humble. So if you want God to, come to do, or you want to join God in His uh, mission, His ministry, then God said, I want you to learn to be humble, have humility. And then He said, I also would like you to be obedient and practice obedience. <laughs> obedience is easy to say, but hard to <laughs> obey, hard to keep. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Now, this one is very well understood uh, sa mga nagbigay ng seminars on missions. So God says in Isaiah, Whom shall I send? I put the I in red and it means there's one God. And then in, the, in that verse, God again said, Who will be our messenger? It's no longer I. One, but it's already our. That means there are three persons in the one God. And how will you answer? And even those who are teaching, they would say, Yes, Lord. I sent Michael one. Instead of you, you ask somebody to go. If I am Biro, Biro, the answer is, I will go send me. Okay, so the purpose statement, this is the thrust. So all the way through, this will be the focus of our message. I hope you are ready for the exam. Those who are taking the bar are taking the exam now. It's a USD. God will use anyone who is willing to confess their sins and then be taught. Taught of what? Of humility. That means not being having be proud or having pride. Number two, 
of obedience to God's will, knowing what is God's will and obey it. Sometimes we obey, but it's not God's will, but it's our will pala, and we thought, oh, and this is God's mission, He wants me to do this, so we have to make sure that that's uh, right. Let's start with a prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. And Lord, we want to partner with you and participate with you. And we thank you, God, that you're the one that's leading in visions and your purpose, Lord, for sending Jesus to die for us so everyone, Lord, all can come be reconciled to you. And so, Lord God, as we go through, we pray you continue to speak to each of our individual hearts and help us to look at ourselves and through your word, the light of your word, Lord God, to see where we need the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from our sins. And not be ashamed and afraid to confess our sins before you. We thank you, Lord God, that Jesus' blood will cleanse us from all our sins. And thank you, Lord, to continue to teach us, continue to help us grow spiritually, so, Lord God, we can have the joy in harvesting, Lord, what you have prepared for us. And so we submit this time into your hands, praying for those who are on their way here, Lord, that you protect them, so that, Lord, they'll be able to come here and be able to hear more the lessons, so that, Lord God, we can look ahead for 2014, it's the year when we will continue to multiply the harvest and not just add one convert at a time, but multiply them. Father, we thank you. We submit now this time into your hands. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'd like to have the meaning of names as an introduction. My name is the my choir tonight. It is old. When the phone rings, who wants the telephone? When you come to the phone ring, then that's the time when you can join me and then also give the meaning of a certain name I'd like to place there. Uh, I, I know some of you are familiar with this, I'll let you just read it, the names. Here are recently registered Chinese uh, baby names, uh, baby names, born in the Philippines. And when they were born, this is what the parents named them. And these are all in Tagalog, Filipino. So, for Filipinos, you would understand that. I don't know if Michael would understand it. If you're born being swindled, how do you call his name? Lino Cole. What is Lino Cole? Lino Cole, the first one. You call us Lino Cole. Okay, because he's swindled by who? She lived. Janet lived. Okay. A born while cooking. What's that? Milo. Oh. Pero, you could make it, it's Milo. Okay, born while being courted. Sili. Gao. Nagliligaw pala. And then born fat. Who's that? Baboy. Born while being hunted. Si Baboy. Baboy pala. Okay. Born with porridge. Lino Gao. Lino Gao. Lino Gao yung kinahin habang tinahanap. By looking for someone, he was lost. Alen Shia. That was the Christian Mark or Sino ba siya? Sino ba dyan? Now this one here, Mike, you can join me here. And you have the phone ring? You have the telephone that rings? Yes. Okay. Then I'm the operator. So you read while the caller calls. Then you stand. Because we're talking to each other. And you read. Can you read? Yes, I can read. Okay. What does it say there? In English. Of course, it's all in English. So you want to translate it in Chinese? Okay. You can come closer if you can not see it well. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I to Andrew. One. Oh, right. Yes, you can speak to me. No, I want to speak to anyone. <laughs> you are talking to someone. Who is this? Oh, I'm someone. <laughs> and I'm here to talk to anyone. I'm urgent. 
Okay. I know you are someone and you want to talk to anyone. What's this urgent matter about? Well, just to tell my sister and one that uh, our brother, no one was involved in that sense. No one got injured and uh, now no one is being sent to the hospital. Right now, everyone is on his way to the hospital. <laughs> Look, if no one was injured and no one was sent to the hospital from the accident that isn't an urgent matter, you may find this hilarious, but I don't have time for this. Huh? I'm so rude. Who are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. You should be sorry. Give me your name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God can use anyone, <laughs> even if he's in ICU. <laughs> okay, I'd like you to have this. Bigay mo muna kaya ano kaya hindi pa tapos si Michael. So I'd like you to give the meaning. Okay, this one, this word is one word in Chinese, but this word comes from this word. This is one word, this is one word. Ito one word na ito naman, ay galing din sa itong tatlong words. So that the failure will like fully na pula. This one word here is flood. How do you read this, Michael? Hong. 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 Okay. And this one is water. And symbol like express the water. And then this one is total coming from together. Pero pagdating dito, yung pagganyan, is straight na niya. Yung dito sa baba, it means the earth. So this is the earth. There was the flood. These people were together. How many were they? There were eight. So this is the number eight, and it is there. So they said, the Chinese character is telling about the flood, Noah's flood, and they know what happens. There were eight who were on the boat. Now, this one is, what is this? Uh, this is Lee. Okay, that's the one. Then the Chinese usually have one family name and one word as a name or two words as a name. So one family name and two words as a name. In this case, the third word, this one is pronounced. Wrong. This is the one, wrong, me and wrong. I just put it because I can find the letter that I want to have it. So this one, ang galing mo lang nasa side. This is the center, li, go, wrong. What does it mean? Li Kong Rong. Li Kong. Yes. Yes. Li is his family name. Okay. It is a kind of fruit, fruit tree. Okay. And his given name Kong Rong means all together glory and honor. Oh, great. Thank, yeah. okay. Thank you. So it's all wrong. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Anyway, so we go now to the body of the I like to ask the focus. God will begin to work with us in how we can humble before Him and before others. So we can be used by Him in a way where only God will be glorified. So, Li Kong Rong, I might be wrong in pronouncing it. So, first number 21, just to give you what happened to Saul before he was King Saul. Uh, Saul answered, this is talking to Samuel. The story here was, Ano yung nawala sa kanila? His father said, you go look for our donkeys or sheep. What, what, what was lost? There were something lost. For three days they were unable to find it. Ash. So the father said, go look for it. So they went with his helper or servant. And then they said, you can't find it for how many days now? And the servant said, oh, there's a seer here, or a prophet, or you, mananag, ano yung tawag niyan sa, sa mananag na yung sa ano eh, beside na eh, yung nagmula. Pero yung prophet, hindi pa yun, ano kaya? So, there is a Samuel here, let's go ask him. So they went, and then Samuel said to Saul, because God spoke, uh, spoke to Saul already, because Israel, I said, are tired of having God as our God, or the head of the nation. We like to have kings like all the other nations. We want to have a king. We don't want to have God as our king. 
Okay, so that's the background. And then when Samuel knew about it, and Saul came, and Samuel said to Saul, Saul, you join us tonight, or is it this afternoon we'll eat together? And he said, oh, you're a very high person, and okay, so I'm like, am I not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel, humble or proud? And it's not my clan, the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin. Why do you say such a thing to me that we will eat with you and, you know? And then, after that, Samuel said, you will be the king of Israel. Anointed him before he was uh, anointed later on when he was chosen. But then continuing the story, Samuel gathered all the tribe of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin was picked. So when the Israelites were asking for a king, Samuel the Mamuhula, or prophet, said, God, they have rejected me. They don't want me to be, you know. And God said, no, they have not rejected you. Who, who did I reject? So let's be careful we don't reject God. He said, no, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me. Okay, let's give him what they want. And I'll show you who he will be. That's why this happened. And then they said, you want one king? Let's gather all the tribes of Israel. Can God read the heart? That's why we have there. God can read the heart. No? Cleanse our heart. So in Samuel got all the tribes. Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin was picked. And after that, Samuel let them pass by in family groups. So Benjamites, maraming family siyan na Benjamites. And Matri's family was picked. So Matri's and family, yung mga kid in the Then he had each man of Matri's family pass by, and Saul, son of Kish, was picked. But when they looked for Saul, they could not find him. Alam na ni Saul na Siya na yung magiging habit. Pero pagdating na ng time, nandiyan maraming tao, where is Saul? We can't find him. Saan ba si Saul? Alam nyo? Saan siya nagtatago? Tina, go. Pangalan niya. Si Tina, go. Tina, go. And they asked the Lord, has Saul come here yet? And the Lord said, yes, he's hiding behind the baggage. So should we confess our sins before God when we see Him before us? Because He knew. Even if nobody else sees it, God knows it. And God said, I want you to confess, otherwise I cannot use you. Kasi lang yung gawain ko. Diba? Agree? Yan. This may sumasagot na. Okay? So this is uh, Saul hiding from the equipment, from the other bodies. And then when he stood up among all these shirts, wow, he's so tall. He is the first king and they said, long live the king. Yeah, this one is Lee. How do you pronounce it, uh, Michael? Lee Kong Rong. This is when he was a boy. Uh, and I knew him quite well and I said would you like me to share your life story so it, it could be encouraging for our members of the church because some embarrass he doesn't want to but later I was able to convince him and look at the thread always in his hand but I'm glad you have to me kind of kind okay let's just go briefly and swiftly to this life and begin to see uh, how God is preparing him or teaching him lessons on humility. <clears throat> two years old, when he was two years old, as far as he can remember, all he can remember, he said to me, was he was at the back of the truck, going out, it was the commercial city where the lumber yard or hardware, lumber yard of the parents, was burning. All the business, uh, like Chinatown, because most of the businessmen were Chinese, and they were all burned. 
Now all you can remember is just seeing all those flames and he was riding on the back of the truck. That's all he can remember. And the next time he remembers is at that time, his father wasn't there, and that's what his uh, siblings were telling him. Your father wasn't around, because he went back to China, and then when he was coming back, he wasn't able to come back anymore, or having difficulty returning back. Because I think at that time, communism has taken over uh, Chiang Kai-shek, uh, Mao Zedong uh, took over, so I have difficulty in coming. And because of that, that's the father, but because of that, <coughs> they were dislocated, were transferred to another place. Now the environments are all Visaya, Visaya. The community around are Visaya, no longer Chinese. <coughs> and he's learning, parents speak to him in Chinese, but when he goes out, all the Visaya neighbors are, what you think, what are you uh, you know that? Uh, do you have done that? I think yeah, so before. The bath. You make fun of the Chinese. I don't see you going right now. And he's so embarrassed. I don't like my boy. Was I born a Chinese? I like. So later on, he doesn't speak Chinese so well. When there's a visitor coming home, I'll visit their house. Where's your son? Where are your children? They can find a way in the room. They're just like so old. I think because we don't know how to speak. They also make fun of us, we don't know how to speak Chinese. All the more, having difficulty speaking Chinese. <coughs> now, he's a happy go lucky type of person where, I don't know, God just have him like that, and he just, he just have all the fun, just play and play. Hide and see, you know, how do you call this as a sweet day? Take the moon, how do you call that in the, you know? Uh, say, yeah, how do we call it? We just play around and then run, and then sometimes we play basketball, the ball is just a speaker, just this. And we play basketball, they play basketball, and <clears throat> any ball games, and any, that's all his life. And since uh, their family business was burned down, and I think his grandfather also was murdered, by an envious uh, Indian businessman, so the uncle took over, but their business, they were not so much included in the business anymore, so they became poor. Uh, so he goes to school, all he remembers when he goes to elementary school and high school and even college was, he has no problem. He just walk to school and come back home, go to school, come back home. That's all he knows about the place where he lives. And sometimes go to the market. So those are only the three areas. All the other areas he doesn't know. But that's his life. He's happy with his life. Happy go lucky. Was he lucky really? Okay, happy go lucky in this term. But he's not angry because <clears throat> he has a classmate to look at him and then share with him his bottom and sometimes find some money, just buy it, they cut in and they sit and make friends with him. <clears throat> so he grew up, and then this good friend of me uh, taught him how to sing. <clears throat> taught him how to sing in a sense, when you sing, some of you sing so loud, <clears throat> but it comes from the throat. Do you know when you sing that it's coming from the throat? How does it, uh, uh, how do you find it when you hear it from your ear? You know, it is throaty. <clears throat> so he said, I'll teach you how to sing. When you sing, you put some air coming out from your throat. Instead of just throat deep, when you sing, put some air. So what singers, they sing from the stamina story. I don't know, but he did not study any, he also did not go to any music school, but he can sing. So, so leave on wrong, learn, try to learn how to sing. And what's funny is, <coughs> Among his siblings and the parents, <coughs> he said, most of them are, one of his uh, Chinese music, music teachers said, oh, you are a key of X. <laughs> if you've taken algebra, what does X, then X equals? Unknown. So if you are key of X, when you sing out of tune, your song is unknown. 
<coughs> and some of his uh, siblings are 95% Quebecs. Some are 75%. Maybe he is 95% at least <coughs> in Chile. <coughs> but God works. When we grow up, God prepares things for us. And for you, I don't know what God's prepared for you. I don't know your background when you grew up. That's your world view. Because that's the world you have lived in. So the way you view the world, as you grow up, that's your culture. But when you grow up with a certain culture and most everyone's doing it and you're doing it, that's what you say, that's the culture. So those going to Thailand, there's a Thailand, whatever the place would be, culture different from Bangkok, from Rai, go, and all of that, Rayom and Rayos. Rayos in our design is, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> he graduated from college and he said, what do I do? I don't know how to work. I don't even know how to work money. <laughs> So, but you graduated from uh, college, so you have to find work, so... <clears throat> was that a humiliating experience? And he was a Chinese citizen, and so hard for a Chinese citizen to find a work. Because they only hired Filipino. Filipino first at that time. It is Filipino first. <clears throat> and then something happened. <clears throat> Uh, since he graduated and he attended the Chinese church, Christian church, he was in Sunday school, just learning how to sing as well. He was a boy and growing up in the youth. And then they had a summer camp in Cebu. <clears throat> and they said, who will we have someone accompany these youths? So, we come wrong. He just graduated, he's more mature, he's not even leave the group. And he said, okay. So they had a summer camp, they enjoyed the camp, and they were on their way home, and they had to take the ball. <coughs> and how many of you have been in Cebu Pier? Or even here, in the pier here. But you're there and you want to buy something to eat, you have to go down, and there are so many people, and many manduloko, indeed silvino, o naloko, maraming. So one of his uh, youth, want to go down to buy something. So he said, I'll have to accompany you. So they went. And when they went, they were met by a, like a from B, you know, from B, the provincia. And here's a big, I know, uh, plenty of money. And he said, can you help me? I like to. And then somebody came, let's come, let's accompany him, help, help him. And the other friend just wanted to, because of being Christian, want to help Joanne, and they went to Egypti, and they went to a house, and they don't know where that place is. They went to a house. And then when they were in the house, you know how to play this game? Have you played that? Dr. Pizarro is good at that. <laughs> That's one. Okay. Where is he? And then, you know, we were at Ligong Rong, and this youth were sitting at the side of the, because they said, uh, let's spend our time, there's nothing much to do, wait, as he's waiting for whoever is to help me. And he was there at the front, and he, you know, the one that's operating, the, let's come more. Okay, they can see it here, then, here it is now, oh, where will you place your bed? Of course, we'll be here, it's here. And then, they bed, and he won, and okay, later on, as they played, they said, I will make my whole money, but you have to also have your watch, your money, whatever you have, to be there, you know? And you know, the, this operator, he said, he saw it here, but then when he wasn't looking, they transferred it, and Lee Gong Rong said, and his part, uh, the youth of the city, they're sure it was there on the other side, so, so we can have the money, they, they also beg. Of course, Lee Gong was feeling, oh, I stick in the wrong place. Where, how can I get up from here? And you know, what they did was, okay, let's make an agreement. After this game, you don't get things, anything back anymore. I and mean, there's a lawyer that signature. So, to cut a story short, when it's open here, how come it was not here? No? He, he, he probably bet here. The ball was here, 
But when they opened here, it was not there. It was already here. Passed so fast. So they were, I have no more watch, I have no more. And the boat's almost leaving. And those uh, Linopo, and <laughs> say, I think we will take this person so we can get all the money. And we just give you, you just go to the boat and we'll just go after you. Where, what, what is the boat you're riding? What, what is your number? And we were ready. The young boy and Pei Gomoro was going to get out, but they already cannot speak. Ooh. Very nervous because they were killed. The one from the front the that's brought in the industry, uh, exported to Manila. The one from Cebu. No, Marami didn't know. I do you call that. The Bodo Bugan. Most of them from Cebu. <coughs> so what happens was, <coughs> they were in the boat. They were asked, where did you go? Where did you go? He said, uh, they can't speak. They can't. And then later on, they said, this is what happened. And they said, oh, OK. You stay behind, let's go home. We look for those people. <laughs> and they knew about those people who are doing it. And his watch was returned, and the other thing was returned. And but that's humiliating, embarrassing, but preparing one. In the world, there are so many foolishness. Be wise. <clears throat> and Nico Moron worked in Manila, and then I just go quickly here. Uh, he joined a perfectionist church. After 12 years, he was uh, being a member, and then later on, he was one of the leaders, and he was asked to be kind of pastor. And this is what he said, the big boss of the denomination said to him, and to those who they are hiring, okay, we are throwing you in the sea, and either you swim or you sink. <laughs> you know what that means? You're going to pastor, bahala kayo dyan. Either you learn how to swim or you sink. Uh, most of those who were hired were neophyte, baguhan. So the question is, would you hire him? Would you hire knowing his background? Lino Ko, Lino Ro, would you want to hire him? How many would say yes? <coughs> How many would say yes? Wala? <laughs> you want to hire him? Uh, you don't want to hire him? But. Oh, who wants to hire him? I want. I don't want to hire him as well. I know him. Did you choose right or did you choose so? Learning obedience, another story, another account, another friend, Chinese friend. But this one, let's go to First Samuel 67, where Samuel, where God said, "Oh, King Saul has not been so good. He's uh, leading Israel." Uh, I have someone else in mind. And then the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at how handsome Eliel is or how tall he is because I have not chosen him. So Samuel went there and he said, <coughs> calling the sons of Jesse, and Eliel was there, wow, big muscles, big person, handsome, tall. He said, this should be the one. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Don't look at the outside appearance, look at the heart. Until one, two, three, and David came, and he said, oh, he is so young, I don't think he will be, the guy said, he's the one. So God can look at our hearts, and you can see you're the one I want to ask to join me. I call to everyone, if you're willing, I can use you. <clears throat> So David had an obedient heart. We will go through that maybe next uh, sermon I gave. We will be talking comparison between King Saul and King David. For me, I, I don't know if you can look at it that way. King Saul was kind of a type of uh, under the law. And David was God showing more under grace. So looking at the heart, the law written on the heart. So another Chinese uh, Filipino citizen is commonly his name was Anjo. And he was uh, fortunate; he was able to work. He was in Manila, 
under with the German company and he was a salesman and they were selling machines. And <laughs> most of you heard his boss were Germans and partner with Spaniards, a Filipino citizen, about 60, 40. And then they sell machines, plants, and it's usually plants, full factories, machines, and that was his experience. For seven years he worked there. And he was given the opportunity to meet the top men, owners of companies, and uh, doing business with them, have discussions in Five Star Hotel. But uh, he said the, at the time, Peninsula uh, and Mandarin and all those were newly built. So he's exposed to those. So he's sort of fortunate. <clears throat> but then he was also joined a low keeping church. And he was drafted as a ministerial trainee after 12 years in the church and seven years as a salesman of a company that he worked. <clears throat> and just three short stories, and hopefully, help us see lessons we need to learn in uh, <clears throat> humility as well as obedience. So, he was a ministerial trainee, he, there is, uh, he said, he has a pastor who is training him, and they visited a family <coughs> member who requests, Can you come visit us? I'm interested in your church. So they went there at the o'clock in the evening and talked with uh, the person. And then his wife was so busy cooking, and they were <coughs> counseling or asking questions, answering, and so on. And it took an hour, almost an hour, nine o'clock. Uh, the counseling was over. The wife was finished cooking. The wife was preparing the food for the visitor to eat. And then the pastor said, Oh, I'm sorry, my wife is waiting for us. We have in a hurry. We have to go. So can you eat just one bite? No, 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 sorry, sorry, we have to go. Uh, what do you think will happen? <laughs> when, when and Joe and the pastor left, what would happen with the husband and the wife? <laughs> culture. Where you live, that's the culture you learn to. And if you are the wife, you're cooking for an hour or so, and then you didn't even touch your cooking, maybe as if it doesn't taste too good. So the next day, or the next Sabbath, the doorkeeper, he attended the church and he told the pastor and said, my wife was so furious. He doesn't want me to join in this church. <laughs> Would your wife say the same thing? <laughs> okay, that's the lesson I think that we can learn as well. And then <clears throat> the second one is uh, the nominations of their articles, booklets, and free magazines and whatever, sharing for people to read and study. And what Angel learned as he reached the you know, being training and reading materials and so on, and how come I read it this way? It's different in understanding. The others are reading it, it's different in understanding. Pinoy said the that is okay. The other said no. Ped up. I'm fed up with ped up. <laughs> But no, no, look, it's a different view. Who, is, who should be right? Go to the source. Who are writing them? So that's another lesson you learned that when someone from their headquarters of the church was sent and you need to teach them, this is the teaching of the church and so on, and you said, well, how come we have not got it the right way? So it's humbling. So, to be willing to accept that we were wrong, or they were wrong, the same with us, isn't that humbling? Humility. You need to learn to be humble. <clears throat> and unless we are humble and willing to be corrected, we won't accept those changes. They won't accept those changes. But they're learning things there. <clears throat> and going to seminars and theological schools, will help understand better, not that they're experts, but at least help them understand better.
I'm not saying anything against the president, but my analysis is when he said, I've read the Constitution. Well, how did he read it? Said, I don't see anything wrong here. But the other said, your advisors there are student councils. What do you mean in student councils? Para yung SK ngayon, ay ayaw na ng SK. Kasi nag-upisa pa lang yun eh. Tinitrain pa. Who could be right? You go to the source who's the one making that. And be careful what we say. Because when we have pride, you, God will make sure you go down. <clears throat> My observation only, we are in a good stress in the Philippines. But when we begin to be, they begin to be proud in the sauna, this is what we have done, this is what we have done, then the typhoon comes. Thankfully God was king. Uh, how did you say that to us? And the damage was not so bad. We could have been self-sustaining with rice. How come now we still don't have rice? Because of the typhoon. Why the, why the typhoons? Because we were so proud. That's in the secular. In the church, will that still be true? When we are so proud of what we have learned so much and compared to others, God said, be careful. Don't be like King Saul. Because sometimes as we go through it, we think we are obeying God. When in fact we are half obedience, which we will cover next time I speak. King Saul said, Oh Samuel, I'm happy. I obeyed what the Lord said to me, all of this. And, you know, you know the story, you can read them before uh, we speak again here and share some experiences hopefully. You can see how God wants to humble us first so He can use us in a way where He will be glorified. Not us, not you, not me. But do you like to be glorified or you want God to be glorified? <clears throat> Number three. Most denominations of annual conferences. And so, Anjo was able to, as a trainee, assisting a conference which was held in their place and they were meeting and discussing okay distribute assignments okay okay you vote with this that, that okay you will handle the projector okay you handle the chairs the first time we'll be using club filipino wow that's a big lip a good place and we have a guest from the u.s coming over so make sure the podium is re-varnished to be good, etc., etc. So many things are divided among themselves, maybe three months away or four months away. Then after <clears throat> two weeks or less than two weeks, meeting again, and most of them said, Sir, I'm sorry, I cannot do that because my contact did not follow what we have agreed. And so no projector, no chairs, the varnish was varnish, and it was, how do you call that yung lalo tuloy, still na akong kintaw, nag iba yung kulay. We have to re-varnish the, and nobody is handling it. So what will you say if your pastor say, okay, you handle all of those? Find a projector. The projector, the one that you have rode an airplane before, you mind on some other thing that that too cool light, big lens. It's not like this anymore. This is modern. Sure, in those times, the one that was like, where will you get that? So what should what should the Angie do? He said, what should I do? I'm not from this place. I don't know anyone here. <laughs> Who does he know? And God, he said, I pray to God. God knows who the people are. When he prayed to God, God just, some people just come up and <clears throat> help him. And things went on so well. The boss of the denomination was so pleased and thanked the pastor so much. And the one that's doing most of the work, nothing. Not even a thank you for helping. Obedience and it's not humility, or you are 
but God is saying, how does one respond? So, whatever I'll do with you, if it's my will, you will go. Follow. Now, would you want to hire Anjo? The other one, we go wrong, you don't want. How about Anjo? Would you like to hire him? Yes. Yes? How many said yes? Yes. <laughs> When God calls us to participate in doing the mission, uh, do we, have, uh, we have many reasons to say no. Uh, Lord, I can't speak. You know? Lord, wala akong parang wala akong Lord eh. Hindi, hindi siya. Wala akong parang wala akong Lord eh. Siya akong wala Lord. Does it sound familiar? No, Lord, uh, yes, that's a, that's a starter. Who was that? Moses? Only? Or Ayodin? <laughs> and God said to Moses, Okay, Moses, what's that in your hand? What are you holding? Anong inawa ka ni Moses? Culinary stick, no? Pinutul ko lang kung may bayabas pa rin eh. Pinutul ko lang to para I can walk. I will use that for my glory. I will perform miracles through that showing you authority. God can see in us, as it's not necessarily a statement, simply one thing in you, that God says, I have used that for my glory. And when you use that, miracles will happen. As you do ministry, when you ask and pray, I will answer. And God is true to his promise. Exam question now. Exam question. Whom shall I send? What's your answer? Did you listen? Sian Jo? Si Rilong Rong is wrong. Whom shall I send? Yes, Lord, send Sian Jo. <laughs> Who will go for us? What's your answer? God is waiting for your answer. Honest answer, humble answer, obedient answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Communion. Uh, Jesus came as a babe. He humbled himself. Almost through. Yes. I just connect this one. We'll pray over the elements and when we go to the closing Prayer instead of me praying, let's sing the song Psalm 23. I think the band has practiced that. And Psalm 23, as uh, Dr. Tanya Ura said, uh, the feast, uh, he said it means restoration, healing, and reconciliation. I think that's what we all need. So let's pray as we sing, but we will partake now the communion because Jesus came as in Philippians 2. Okay? That is legal and wrong today. <laughs> and that is Anjo today with J O O J Anjo. Okay, Philippians two fifty five to fifty eight. Ah, to five to eight. Sorry, go uh, play. Have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God counted as the being on equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, humility, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, becoming obedient even unto death, yes, the death of the cross. So as we partake, as we pray for the emblems, Let's remember what Jesus did. We want to be like Jesus. Jesus lives in us. And we want to partner with God in His mission. And remember, let's remember, let's allow God to help us see ourselves and walk in humility, even if it's painful, shameful, whatever you describe it. And just obey whatever is God's will. And then we can see the harvest God's glory. So let's bow our heads as we pray for the end.